Hello, this is your evil twin, welcoming you back to Let's Play Singularity. Last time we reunited with Barasov, but then Demichev's helicopters spotted us, dropped off a whole load of Spetsnaz for us to deal with. Just grab this weapon tech that's lying here. Ah oh, nice, double weapon tech! That'll be thanks to the scientist upgrade. Before we go into battle, we'll make use of this Augmenter. We could switch back to the Sharpshooter upgrade, but we have actually been getting very good use out of Scientist, with all the double weapon tech and double E99 tech, so uh, we'll be sticking with that for the time being. As for the other passive perks, we now have access to Medic, which increases health pack effectiveness. Very useful when playing in hard mode. I'll spend the last of the E99 on fully upgrading Impulse. Could instead have put those points into Deadlock, but we haven't actually seen much of Deadlock in combat yet, and uh, the Deadlock upgrades, despite being quite cheap, are actually very powerful, so I'd like to show off some more normal Deadlock before I show off the massively overpowered Deadlock. <laughs> oh, saw the red laser of a sniper, so I'll drop a Deadlock bubble here and use it as a sort of shield. See the bullets being slowed down by the time bubble. Uh, of course, it does also affect my bullets as well, which is a bit of a nuisance. There we go. Out sniped the sniper. I'll just take away this guy's cover by aging it. And then I'll take away his arm by shooting it. And now I've got this guy trapped in a bubble of frozen time! <laughs> oh, that guy lived! We can't be having that! There goes his head! <laughs> That was massive overkill as well, but it was fun. Oh, that guy dodged my time bubble. Sorry to be a pain in the arse. Talking of pain in the arse, Barasov, shut up! Seriously, I'm not going to fix the crane when I'm dealing with all these Spetsnaz. Then again, I suppose they are pretty harmless. Oh, he's just at the edge of the bubble. <laughs> What's that guy doing hiding there? Sorry, I haven't got time to mess about. Now, some of you might remember that I did a Let's Play of a game called Time Shift, in which you could slow, stop and rewind time. Now, one of the funnest things in that game was trapping enemy soldiers in frozen time and then riddling them with a gazillion bullets and watching them all take effect at the same time. Just like that! <laughs> of course, in Singularity you can't freeze the entire world, you can just freeze uh, a small bubble. But that's actually how Time Shift handled its multiplayer. You couldn't freeze everyone in a multiplayer game so instead you could create these bubbles of frozen time. Well done. I the crane over. That's the crane fixed. Of course there's the new game Quantum Break, which has a uh, very similar mechanic. You can throw out bubbles of frozen time. And it's a very fun mechanic. I'm happy to see it in as many games as possible. You'll notice these um, bubbles of frozen time, they're, they're quite large. They're, they're actually larger than the ones in Quantum Break. 
Now, if I had actually spent points on upgrading Deadlock, then these time bubbles would be even larger. And rather than just trapping one or two enemies, I'd be trapping entire squads in frozen time. Which is very powerful. And, uh... Does make things quite easy. <laughs> I'll be showing that off later. <laughs> I love the animation when you get someone mid-run. New weapon here, the Spike Shot. It's an E99 charged railgun that fires an explosive spike. Each shot requires a brief delay to fully charge the rail. It's quite a tricky weapon to use, but it's also a lot of fun. Ah, yes! Got two of one shot. Oh, missed that guy, but the blast did still stagger him. Ah, missed again. Oh, he's a sniper. <laughs> oh, sniper lurking in the dark there. Yes. Easy to spot thanks to the thermal vision when you're aiming down the sights. <laughs> oh, you can have that back. Ah, the spike actually killed him outright. What I love is the fact that when you hit someone with the spike, it staggers them. Um, but to quote Fist of the North Star, they're actually already dead. <laughs> Just a moment later, it explodes, and generally speaking, it blows a limb off. <laughs> Did you see that? All those guys clustered around that one explosive barrel. They were so keen to crowd around it, they actually nudged it slightly out of the way. I want to hide behind the barrel! No me! No me! <laughs> ah, missed! Yeah, the spike shot doesn't actually have very great accuracy. It's more of a medium range weapon than a sniper weapon. <laughs> That's the fully upgraded impulse for you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, he's still writhing around. Oh. <laughs> Right, I'll just take your shotgun, thank you very much! Now, those doors he came through are the correct route ahead. But first we'll check over here and find some E99 tech. Ah, excellent! Spike shot ammo! I was running a bit low on that. Hmm, only got three shots from that pickup. Then again, it is a one hit kill. What's that? Uh oh. Uh oh! Uh oh! Ah! Uh, uh oh! Oh, look! Yes! This Zek can actually turn completely invisible when it goes out of phase. But you can reveal it with the spike shot thermal vision. Ah! Damn, I overcharged the spike shot! If you hold down the trigger too long, then it overcharges, and when it fires, the shot goes completely off course. Ooh, he's here! Search and destroy! Gets you more ammo. 
Ammo is actually quite plentiful, and it's not worth getting rid of scientists in order to use that. Oh! He left the light swinging. Very spooky. But hey, I've got an E99 accelerator. I ain't afraid of no Zek. Maybe a little. quite a bit from that group of survivors. We need to get through this spinning fan blade. Now the TMD's chronolite reveals this ghostly crate that's out of phase with our time, sort of caught between two different times. We can use the TMD to pull it back into phase and make it solid. Use the deadlock to freeze the fan and carry the crate free. The interesting thing about out-of-phase objects is that they're infinite. If I were to somehow drop this crate somewhere inaccessible and I still needed it, I could go... It's taking a lot longer to make it to the rail than I thought it would. I could actually go back to that cloud and pull out another identical crate, and the first one would then disappear. infinite crate dispenser. Or rather, it will dispense the same crate over and over again, in a sort of time loop. Because it makes no sense, Mikhail! You're putting these people at risk for no reason! And all you're doing is waiting for death! But it's too dangerous out there! Listen to me. The sewers will take us to the train yard. From there we can take an engine to the docks and escape! No! It's suicide! Very well. I wish you the best, my friend. I hope to see you on the mainland, surrounded by your family, comrade. Interesting dilemma, but- Oh! Ah! Oh no! This is the Echo Zek. A sort of mini-boss. Oh no! Overcharged! Oh no, oh no, oh no! Put a deadlock here. You can't actually freeze an Echo Zek with a deadlock, but it does slow it down. You can freeze it with liquid nitrogen. Chilling stuff. But it can't be smashed in one hit though. Oh, gone invisible. Ah! Got him! Ah, yes. Even though it teleported, the spike was still impaled in it. Ah, oh, damn. That time it's teleporting, it actually somehow shook off the spike. Ah, oh, missed! Ah, oh, gotcha! Ah, oh, that was quite exciting. <laughs> so, yes, as you can see, the spike shot is pretty problematic at short range, since you have to charge each shot, and it's not that great as a sniper weapon either. It's very suited to mid-range fighting. It's quite a specific situation weapon. goodies from here. Yeah, you remember uh, before about the teleportation experiments and the guy that seemingly got killed that K-9 
came back as a sort of teleporting ghost and murdered someone. So, uh, yes, some more about that. About, uh, I'm talking about how uh, their friend was going to take part in these exciting teleportation experiments. That's a bit of E99 tech hidden behind the stairs. Then renew them to climb them. Uh, that's a little worrying. Where's that coming from? They've broken through. Killed everyone. Everyone. Forgive me, Mikhail. You were right. We should have gone with you to the docks. No. No! Of course, we'll also be hearing from the guys that headed to the docks, and uh, they'll think, oh no, we should have stayed behind. <laughs> oh, got a Zek here. Doesn't see. Oh, oh, yep, yeah, he's noticed us. Yeah, fortunately, Zeks can't seem to teleport through windows and walls. Ah, interesting. The uh, chrono ping, footsteps going through a locked door, rather than down this hole. But uh, down this hole is actually the only way to proceed. <laughs> yeah, I I just find the spike shot so satisfying to use. It's much quicker and easier using shotgun or assault rifle, but it's very cool. Oh, oh! Aw, oh, he wants to play fetch! Here, boy! Yeah, the, the spike shot... Um... I really love the design, it's a very cool looking device, and um, the mechanic of charging it up is quite fun, and the way that it impales enemies and causes them to blow up a second later, that's always fun. So um, I really enjoy using it, even though it's not the most efficient weapon. And there's the satisfaction that knowing that if you actually manage to nail an enemy with it, then they're dead. You're already dead. Ah, here's the other side of that locked door. Ah, where'd you come from? Oh, let's drop a deadlock. Got them all trapped in it. Set that one guy in the edge. Oh, that Zek was out of phase. So it wasn't killed by the barrel. Oh no, it's going to overcharge. Yeah, you see those prongs come up at the front. It means it's overcharged. Yeah! <laughs> also, um, if you're playing with a controller, then the controller really vibrates when it's overcharged. I like the fact that they made it, um, you know, just become super inaccurate and miss when you overcharge, you know, rather than damaging the player or something. Ah! Guess I do need to use the spike shot for that. Yeah, the uh, chrono ping footsteps leading to the locked door, of course, were a clue to the fact that they could be opened from the other side. 
I tried talking Pyotr into coming with us one last time, but to no end. He can be very stubborn once his mind is made up. My group left this morning with half of the food and ammunition. So far, we haven't had any problems. Maybe we'll get lucky and make it all the way to the docks safely. Mikhail! Mikhail! Come quickly! Oh dear. I guess there really was no right answer to that dilemma. Now let's make use of all the weapon tech we've been picking up and get some upgrades for the spike shot. As I've said, it's fun to use, but it's also quite tricky to use. So you do need to put some upgrades in to actually make it effective. The obvious upgrades to get are to upgrade the clip capacity and the reload speed. So um, you can shoot more often before you need to reload. And then the reloads themselves are quite quick. But it's also useful to upgrade the damage. That might seem pointless since it's a one-hit kill, but um, what this is useful for is if an enemy is caught, if you don't hit them directly, but they're caught at the edge of the explosion, uh, bumping up the damage means the explosion is more likely to kill them rather than just stagger them. And uh, I'll also put a point into upgrading the shotgun. I'll actually boost its damage. Since we're going to be encountering some enemies that are quite resilient. Yeah, now that the uh, spike shot has um, more effective explosions, uh, one way you can use it is to actually intentionally aim at the ground near enemies, aim towards their feet and uh, just rely on killing them with the uh, splash damage of the explosion. Ah, wow, 600 E99 tech. It would have been 300, but uh, scientist made it 600. That message gives us a nice little teaser for what we'll be encountering next time. A new type of enemy and a new type of gameplay. That creepy music doesn't inspire much confidence. Oh, that's the only way to go. We shouldn't be far apart now. Thanks for watching and do join me next time.